Usually what we mean when we're talking about PAD or peripheral artery disease is blockages involving the arteries that supply blood to the lower extremities, the legs and feet, basically. Usually the blockages are caused by the buildup of cholesterol-rich plaque within the wall of the blood vessel that can produce a narrowing or actually can produce a complete occlusion of a major vessel supplying blood to the lower extremities. It affects 12 to 20 percent of the adult population in the United States over age 65, and that translates to about 10 million people. The good news is that there are lots of uh, treatments uh, available. So the key is identification of the patient and then making sure that they're getting appropriate treatment. So if we look at the population, uh, in the United States that has PAD, most of them have some identifiable risk factors. So it's more common in the elderly population. Other risk factors include diabetes, high blood pressure, elevated cholesterol or lipid levels, uh, and a family history of vascular disease. One of the most important risk factors that is potentially reversible is cigarette smoking. So what are the symptoms of PAD? In many cases, there may be some blockages, but they may be completely asymptomatic. There's a population of patients with PAD who develop pain in their legs when walking, and that's called claudication or intermittent claudication. And what that is is a deficit in blood flow so that when the muscles of the legs are working to walk, climb stairs, or exercise, that you develop some cramping pain in those muscle groups. Now, in very advanced stages of peripheral artery disease, that's where you don't have enough blood flow to the legs or feet, even at rest. So even when the muscles aren't working, and we term that critical limb ischemia. Now that's an absolute emergency because patients with critical limb ischemia may be the ones who are at uh, imminent risk for loss of, uh, of their limb or an amputation. In mild forms of PAD, where there may be no symptoms or minimal symptoms, the focus is on medical treatment and risk factor modification. We stress stopping smoking, regular exercise, a healthy diet, and then controlling those other risk factors like high blood pressure and diabetes. Now, if a patient has more severe PAD and they have claudication and it's really becoming uh, lifestyle impacting or disabling for them, then there are interventions and that uh, uh, includes both surgical procedures, which are bypasses, but more and more we're trying to do as much as we can using minimally invasive therapies or endovascular therapies. So that may include things you've heard about like angioplasty, placement of stents, atherectomy, and other new and innovative uh, minimally invasive technologies that are being developed to reestablish good blood flow uh, to a patient's lower extremities. Now in severe forms, critical limb ischemia, where you have pain at rest due to lack of blood flow or have actual uh, uh, tissue loss or at risk for tissue loss with ulcers, wounds that won't heal, or gangrene, that's really an emergency. And we view that as a limb preservation or a limb salvage situation. If you have PAD, I think that Weill Cornell Medical Center and New York Presbyterian Hospital is an ex excellent place to, uh, to be. Um, we have uh, tremendous experience in terms of the volume of patients with PAD. We have experience with all the latest endovascular or minimally invasive uh, techniques and we're actively involved in research to develop uh, new minimally invasive devices for even more effective treatment of PAD and we're also involved in different research projects involving medical therapies including uh, novel stem cell therapies for treatment of critical limb ischemia. I can uh, recall one uh, uh, lovely lady who I had the opportunity to treat who had severe PAD. In fact, she'd undergone multiple procedures uh, at another institution, and her physicians thought that she had now come to the end of the road, that the only thing option for her was, in fact, an amputation. With that particular patient, um, we persevered. We weren't interested in uh, an amputation. She was otherwise uh, quite functional. And so we were able, ultimately, to do a uh, bypass procedure on her that was successful. This is now over a year ago, and she recently just sent me a card uh, with a copy of some um, golf tournament results where she won first place in a recent golf tournament. When you have a patient like that who really is, uh, you know, got nowhere else to turn, going to lose their leg, and you can save their leg or do something to save their life uh, by treating their vascular disease, that's what's really the, the most satisfying thing that we do ultimately.